You ever have an audio recording where it's mostly you talking, but in the background you can like hear someone else talking through your headphones like this? Typically you'd get rid of this with a noise gate, but in this situation the noise gate wasn't able to remove this audio. So this is what's remaining after being noise gated. So I'm going to show you how I remove this kind of thing. And it doesn't have to be an audacity. This should work in pretty much any software that supports the few effects that I'm going to use. So first of all, let me enable spectrogram and I will change the max frequency to like 1200 and the window size to be, I don't know, this, sure. So if I zoom in here, you're gonna see this is me talking and this, this is the guy in the background talking. And you'll see when I talk, because I'm a man, I have, yeah, the triangle. I have low frequency noises, even though I'm screaming. Yeah, the try in this audio clip, I'm like talking in a high pitch. It's still clearly I have way more low frequency noise here than this has. Now there are like this kind of thing. That's like my keyboard and this does have some low frequency noise, but we're going to remove that too. So like keyboard clicks and stuff like that should hopefully get filtered out using this method too. Do you need to first of all determine the lowest frequency that the background noise, or in this case background voice, exists in? I have open headphones, so it's all just treble. There's very little bass. So it seems like everything below 500 is real, actually me talking, and anything above that is gonna be background noise. So what I'll do is I'll put a low pass filter on this at 200, cause that's pretty safe, 48 dB roll off. And now I should have pretty much just the areas where I'm talking with a few little extra blips here and there. You'll also notice everything below about 80 Hertz is cut. That's because I've already processed this and I use a filter curve that cuts off everything below about 80, 75 hertz, this area. People's voices usually can't register below like 80 hertz normally, so everything below that is gonna be low frequency noise, like just stuff that you don't want. Same up here, like everything higher than this is gonna be just noise. Your voice doesn't register at all, anything above that. But that's besides the point. That's just my, you know, little, little thing I do. The next thing you need to do is do another noise gate on this. So now all this remaining stuff that isn't me talking, like, keyboard clicks and stuff, this is all gonna be super low, like pretty dang low, and me talking, it's gonna be, it's gonna be pretty high. Now you're still gonna wanna play around and find a sweet spot. So me talking, it's typically about 36, and the loudest thing I wanna get rid of is like kinda 48, 42, so I'll probably just do 45. That seems pretty decent, and you're gonna wanna set this to minus 99 because we want to fully get rid of this signal completely. There should be no signal. You wouldn't normally do this much reduction when doing a normal noise gate. The other settings, just uh, that's up to you, however you wanna do it. And so now you should have a track that is just your voice. There should be nothing but when you're talking. And it's gonna sound like this. It's gonna sound like basically nothing, but this is super useful. So now I'm gonna amplify this all the way up to whatever it says default to make it just, you know, super loud. And I'll save this track as trigger track. Now I'll close this out. I'm gonna bring back the original track in here and I'll also bring in my trigger track. And so these two should be very similar looking. So now for this top one, I'm gonna select the whole top one and I'm going to go to effect and auto duck. For the settings here, I'm gonna do minus 24 because Audacity is stupid and doesn't let you duck more than 24 dB. And these settings are kind of up to you. You wanna have it as low as you can, but also too little might not work and too much is gonna leave in too much of the background noise and it's not gonna work at all. So you might wanna just reduce these to like, I don't know, point 0.2 is probably fine. Threshold, this is gonna be the threshold of your signal. So anything in your signal louder than this. And for threshold, I'll make it 35, cause I don't know, who cares? It doesn't matter. <laughs> so now that first auto ducking completed and it isn't done yet because now you have to do it again. I'm just gonna hit repeat auto duck and then I'm gonna do it again and then I'm gonna do it one more time. So four times in total, that's gonna give me a hundred decibels 116 actually, but I just wanted to make sure 100% is ducked. So this method isn't perfect. You're gonna see a couple of these spikes. These are gonna be voices that you do want to keep. 
So you're going to want to go through on this top track and anywhere where you're talking, like stuff you want to keep, you're going to want to remove. <laughs> so here you can see the noise gate didn't remove that. That's me talking. That's like noises I want. So I'll just do generate silence. So like right here. Uh... It didn't get that because I was making a really high pitched noise. And this method might not work at all if you're a female. So, you know, if you got a high pitched voice, this is like relying on the fact that my voice has lower bass frequencies. And so you'll see occasionally whenever I make noises that don't have those bass frequencies, that it doesn't remove my voice. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to just make a track up top that has none of my voice. Nothing that I want to keep in the final track will be in this top track. This will all be the stuff that I want to remove. And not every big spike is gonna be your voice. So like right here, this is me like drinking out of a water bottle or something. I don't want it, so it's staying in. So here, this is me doing like a wheezing laugh. And you know, it's, it's just a tiny little blip. How would I ever like notice that? Well, a lot of times you can look at the trigger track as you're looking at the top track. And if it kind of like, you know, these are like basically in line, like they're very similar. So that kind of tells me, hey, maybe I should look at this region. And yeah, that's like a laugh that I should probably keep in. So I'll just, you know, get rid of it. Same right here. This is me making like noises. And I can just go through and at the same time, I'm looking at both tracks at the same time because if I see like, you know, if I see signal down here, that kind of tells me I should look up at the top. This could possibly, yeah, this is me like laughing. And you'll see here, it did get some of it, but it didn't get this like big spike. So I'm just gonna select all of that. Silence, boom, it's gone. And this one, yeah, that's another wheezing laugh. I could just tell by the waveform. And the fact that there is a tiny little spike right beneath it. Like here, down here, right here, I see a little thing and then, <laughs> yep, that's me doing a little giggle. Uh. Here's another situation. So down here you can see it got something and then there's a big spike where it missed it. So that's definitely my voice that I wanna keep. And that's it, I've gotten to the end of the track and I've gotten rid of pretty much any little spot where it didn't get rid of me talking. So now I'll close that trigger track and I have this whole track right here, and this is just the stuff that I'm gonna remove from the original track. So this is all the sounds of the guy talking in the background. It's all my keyboard clicks and stuff. There's like weird cell phone noises in here that I'm getting rid of. There's even like spaces where I'm breathing in that I'm getting rid of that I wouldn't want to include anyway. And to get rid of all this from the original track, I'm gonna select it. I will then invert that audio. Now I'm going to bring in the original audio track. I'll select everything, tracks, mix, and render. So the reason this works is because I took the track that has just audio I want to get rid of. When you invert that and mix it in with the original, because it's inverted, the non-inverted sounds will then cancel each other out. So you'll get just silence. So now this whole audio track will be just me talking. Yeah. There won't be any. Here we see background the noises. Hawk. Now, obviously, you can't do anything about background noises like this. Yeah. You can still hear the guy talking in the background <laughs> when I'm talking. So if you're talking. No, no, I, I just want the. If you're talking and someone's talking in the background, there's no way of removing that. But if you're not talking, like in this situation, I'm not talking. Yeah. Nothing. Mm hmm. In any spot where I'm not talking, there's no more background noise. Yeah. It's completely gone. Now in a perfect world, uh, someone who knows how to make Audacity plugins, and I tried looking into it, it's like way complicated. You have to like, it's written in Lisp, which is one of the most nonsensical programming languages, but I'll give them, I'll give Lisp users this. It's more readable than Rust. Okay, anyway, it would be really cool to have a plugin that was just like an inverted noise gate that could uh, be weighted by frequency. So you could be like, okay, any signal around like 120 hertz, that's like my trigger, you know, I want to keep that if there's signal there. Basically, it would just automate what I just did, but what I just did is pretty simple. It should be pretty doable for anybody that understands Audacity. Again, you can do this in any software that supports auto ducking and inverting and a noise gate. That's the very simple plugins. You can do this in anything. I'm just using Audacity because that's, you know, 
That's what I use kind of reluctantly. I know how to use it. Does that mean it's good software? Not exactly. It's kind of bad, maybe, but I don't have anything to compare it to. Who knows? Audition might be way, way, way better, but I don't know. I've never touched it. One day I'll try it. I have it installed. I just haven't opened it up yet. Not once. Anyway, if you like this video, uh, subscribe to my channel because I do not make Audacity tutorials. I make like random stupid videos. Uh, and sometimes I make really crazy in-depth videos about really like highly technical topics. And then I'll make a video about like me cooking a, a cup of noodles or something immediately after that. It's for real true connoisseurs.